my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you're watching. Welcome to a Black Girl Magic slash science fiction reading vlog. If you're not familiar with my Black Girl Magic series, that is a series in which I review the representation of Black girls and Black women within the science fiction and fantasy genre. I will leave a playlist of those vlogs down below. And in those books, I'm evaluating not just the writing and the sci-fi fantasy elements of the story, but also reading these books very critically to see how Black girls are being represented presented, um, reviewing elements of Black culture. Just because a book is written by a Black author doesn't mean that the Black representation is healthy or good, right? So anyway, the Black Girl Magic book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog is The Space Between Worlds, which I am already up to part two, so that makes it sound like I'm very far, but part two is literally just page 64. And I have, before I do anything else, I have to gush about this freaking book. This book has been making the rounds over on booktube and I was really excited about it but I still wasn't prepared for how phenomenal it is. I'm seriously so scared that it's going to take a turn for the worse and I'm just going to be destroyed with disappointment because so far this is shaping up to be a five out of five star read for me. In this world an eccentric genius named Adam Bosch has unlocked the secrets of the universe making it possible for some people to travel to different versions of Earth. Our protagonist Kara is one of those individuals and out of the 380 parallel universes, she is only alive in eight of them, which allows her to visit 372 worlds because it is impossible to visit a world that you are still currently living in as that will cause a very painful and sudden death. When one of her versions is murdered, she ends up getting plunged into New World with a very old secret. I love that this book just throws you into the story and it leads with this pleasant but matter-of-fact first-person POV narration. So far I love the representation of natural hair and how natural hair is being written and I love that our protagonist is definitely morally gray and almost quite unlikable. She is very kind of gruff and not the easiest around the edges and I'm just very much enjoying following a female protagonist like that. There's also representation for sex workers. Kara's mom was a sex worker and I actually really appreciate that in a young adult science fiction story. I also really like that so far there's inclusion of a real world religion as well as fictional religion that was created for the stories and there's an element of one of the religions that I'm really digging so far where you essentially go into this place of worship and then explosions are set off literally flames are set off. And you are supposed to, at that point, make some sort of confession and nobody else can hear you, not even the preacher. And I actually really, really dig that. I also really love religions that center fire. Just the world building is incredible. And even though I'm only 64 pages in, the character work is incredible. I have already annotated and written so many notes and just marked up this book to high hell. I'm actually like seriously look at all these annotations. I actually am reading this very slow because I keep having to stop and mark things down and I keep trying to stop myself from doing that but I just can't help it. I'm really loving this book and the two other books that I'm going to be reading for the purpose of this vlog The Relentless Moon which is the third book in the Lady Astronaut series. This series is Hugo award-winning and just the science representation the mathematical representation is really good. It's one of those trilogies that combine well it's one of those series that combines real science with imagined science and I just really appreciate that and the, the first book essentially starts with Elma York is a lady pilot and she flew in World War II and she is fighting very hard to become an astronaut but this is a historical science fiction book and the world parallels ours so this is set I believe it started in the 50s 60s and women weren't allowed to be astronauts. Our protagonist is Jewish and she's also having to overcome anti-semiticism within her field and I love that the cast of characters has a lot of black characters and it talks so much about anti-black racism and the very 
various ways which black people are kept out of STEM fields. And basically the earth has become uninhabitable due to climate change. And there is now a space race to get people off of planet earth in order to colonize a new planet. Then I also have Android Karenina, which is a retelling of a Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, except this is a sci-fi retelling. There's so much technology. There are mechanical wolves. It definitely gives me like a steampunk vibe and I really dig Russian literature. I loved Fyodor Dostoevsky in high school. So this video is gonna have a lot of space in it as well as some androids. As of right now, the weather is so freaking nice. So I'm gonna take my dog to the dog park. I mean, we go every single day, twice a day, but it's just nice to be able to go when it's actually warm outside. And don't worry, I go to a very large dark, dark park, dog park where it's really easy to social distance and I wear a mask the entire time. All right, I will check in with y'all later. Come to check on me. pretty late and Akasha and I are ready for bed. I spent the day just exercising with her and reading really casually and I took a nap. It's just been a really soothing and low-key day. I wanted to start Android Karenina and I'm pleasantly impressed with how sci-fi heavy the book is as well as the intensity of the inclusion of robots and androids. In this world, I was not expecting it. I was expecting the robots to kind of be just a boost to the story. However, Russian society in this world absolutely revolves around androids and different technologies. And I'm just really pleasantly surprised because I wasn't expecting it to be so heavy on the emphasis of science fiction. Other than that, I'm liking but not loving it. However, I'm only on page, I think 150 and it's over 400 pages, 400, oh, it's 530 pages. So definitely have a long way to go. Now it is time for bed and I will check in with y'all tomorrow. Who's a sleepy puppy? Ready for bed? Yeah, who's a sleepy pup? Are you walking the dog? Huh? Oh no. Dying. She yeah, she's just letting it happen. Like this is my new favorite TV show. Today on Akasha and Luna. when I come in here like I've been putting off doing an update because every time I come in this room she just looks at me with pure sorrow because I'm not paying attention to her so I'm gonna give y'all a quick reading update on the space between worlds and android Karenina who where do I start okay I'll start with android Karenina because last time I updated you I was 
interested in the book. Okay, maybe not interested. Maybe that's maybe that's going a little far. I wasn't hating the book. I was liking it, but I wasn't necessarily enjoying it. And now that I'm on page 190, around 160 or 150, it started to get real. So this book centers around an affair that Anna Karenina has with Count Vronsky. And I just don't, don't, I just don't care. Like if these characters were more strongly built or more interesting or compelling, I might care about their affair, but I don't. <laughs> I can't stand Anna because her husband does nothing but provide for her and treat her well. He is logical and has great morals. He's really just like an upstanding guy, but she just can't stand him and hates him and treats him poorly whenever she possibly can. So I can't stand her and I'm ready for her to die. But that's not the point. The point is I'm starting to actually enjoy this book because we now have a robot baby that was conceived by humans and I still have many questions, but we also have robots that are designed for one-on-one -on -one combat. I just, I love fighter robots, okay? I love it. So I'm actually enjoying the story more now. Um, it's starting to get less familial politicky and just cooler overall, but I just have to explain how much Anna sucks. Her husband literally said, I consider jealousy a humiliating and degrading feeling and I shall never allow myself to be influenced by it. But there are certain rules of decorum that cannot be disregarded with impunity. And basically he's talking about how she's just openly flirting with this count in public. And he's literally like, yo, you can do what you wanna do, I don't care. But please don't do it in public where everybody can see and then I look bad. You know what I mean? Then later he's walking towards her to greet her and she narrates the whole scene as follows. All of these ways of his she knew and all were hateful to her. Nothing but ambition, nothing but the desire to get on. That's all there is in his soul. As for these lofty ideals, love of culture, religion, they are only so many tools for getting on. What exactly is the problem with this? I don't understand. Like this man is civilized and has great ideals and he's not possessive. I just, I can't stand her. But let's talk about the space between worlds because oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I have been flying through this book. I'm on page 233 now. I think I have about 90 pages to go. And this book is giving me life. First of all, I love that this book gives off orphan black vibes because that is one of my favorite shows and I just absolutely love it. There's really great commentary on addiction as well as commentary on the typical disregard that corporations and people in power tend to have for their subordinates and the lack of care um, and protections that are put in place for workers. I love that the world building is just bright and meticulous and lush. It's just so pregnant with possibility and technology and it's just so vibrant. I absolutely love it. And the characters feel so real, especially Kara, our main character. She is definitely a grieving, broken, messy black girl. Um, and, and she's so complex and she has great things about her and horrible things about her. And I just love her so freaking much. I feel so close to this character. And this is also one of the most highly, highly quotable books I've ever freaking read. The detailed character work for not just our main character, but even the side characters is brilliant. And I love that Kara, even though she's one of those hard, badass, like cold, dark exterior main character, she still doesn't fit into the stereotype of that character because she does allow herself to have emotions and feel infatuation. Early on in the book, we find out that she's recovering from being in an abusive relationship and the representation of abusive relationships is really intense and graphic, but I also think that it is so spot on and so important. I also love the subtle commentary on immigration and refugee life and the female-female relationship. In here is one that I'm enjoying because it's one of those relationships where the two are constantly kept apart by circumstance and the circumstance that is dividing these two women is class. There often isn't discussion about how class keeps people from dating and how money breaks couples up or kills relationships before they even start. Um, and so I really love that class is being explored so at length in this book, not just through the relationship, but just on every page, like class permeates every 
aspect of this book and I am living for it. But I also just like when romances are two people constantly pining for each other and they're kept apart. Like that is just one of my favorite tropes. I love it because it feels so real. Our main character definitely has PTSD and lives with anxiety. And I think the representation for that is fantastic. And another thing that's caught me off guard about this book is that it's surprisingly philosophical without being fake deep. You know what I'm talking about. But it, it gives you so much to think about and to ponder. And it's just delicious to chew on every freaking sentence. And I think I mentioned earlier, I love the contrast between scientific and spiritual thinking, neither of which is put on a pedestal or seen as better than the other. But there are so many religious spiritual characters and then science heavy characters and characters in the middle. And I just love seeing all of that together because it makes these characters feel real. The book also is developing this like really great mystery that I wasn't expecting and it's gotten some twists and turns that definitely caught me off guard in a pleasant way but they would but when you think about it those twists and turns were hinted at so the framework was there because I hate when twists just come out of nowhere and there was no establishment like no hinting or anything they're just magically twists and I just can't stand that. I started making dinner and my rice is ready or it's about to be ready so I'm going to um finish making my dinner and I'll update you later. Are you serious right now? I left you alone for six minutes. Are you serious? Haven't you done enough? What the hell? Are you even sorry? Okay, well, clearly not. Clearly nobody's sorry. <sighs> Also, I love that my ASMR room is just playing beautifully in the background as chaos ensues. day I just hopped out of the shower it's about one o'clock in the afternoon right now um so far nothing much has happened today I just woke up did my normal routine as usual walked the pub had my tea did some journaling and then I spent I've been reading ever since and this book is getting it got real okay <laughs> once I got to page 350 360 the whole world changed okay everything changed it got really horrific and gruesome and disturbing in the best ways i was literally sitting with my jaw open for like two minutes because i was so so disturbed and so freaking shocked and i wish i could tell you what shocked me but look i just didn't see it coming people are dying left and right motherfuckers are going into space i just have so many what is going on? Who knows? Not me. But I just got out of the shower and I'm gonna beat my face a little bit. I'm in the middle of drying my hair. I want to spend a couple hours outside at the park hiking with her and reading. I'll check in with y'all later. to party with it. Ma'am. Ma'am. to the next day. Today started out the same as any other day. Wake up, have tea, breakfast, take the dog outside, all of that fun stuff. We went for a really good walk as well. I'm wearing a different shirt than you saw me in um, this morning because I had a malfunction with the shirt that I was wearing. We're not gonna talk about that though. So I just had breakfast. I made hash browns with spicy sausage. Like I basically made a sausage hash with an egg over easy and some toast. It was so delicious. Akasha was 
very jealous. And last night I started reading The Relentless Moon and I continued that today. And whew, okay, so as of right now, I am on page 185. And I had so many reservations about this book going in because it's told from Nicole's perspective instead of Elma's perspective. And I was really nervous about that because y'all know how much I love Elma York. But Nicole's perspective is slapping. I honestly like her narrating the story more than Elma. I know, please, please don't hurt me, I'm small. Elma is such a sweet, just kind-hearted woman. And yes, she definitely will snap if you put her up to it. But Nicole is just, all bite all the time and I really love that. I love the way that she narrates. For example, I glared at him with all the formidable power of a Swiss finishing school education coupled with lessons from my mother. It is a glare that tells the viewer that I am not planning on murdering them but that they are already dead and I'm trying to find their next of kin. I am screaming, y'all. I just, I, as you can see, y'all can see why I love Nicole. And I know I've only read 200 pages, but dare I say, this book is shaping up to be my favorite out of the three books thus far. I know there's gonna be one additional book, but I'm freaking loving it. This book is for anybody who loves space operas where the characters are constantly having to put out spacecraft malfunctions and do damage control. It talks at length about the dangers of operating a spacecraft and it doesn't shy away from the highly technical astronautical language, which only makes the story feel more real. Mary Robinette Kowal has done an incredible amount of research and consulted with so many mathematicians and scientists in order to make these books as close to actual rocket science as possible. And you can totally see that work going into this book. I always recommend this series for anybody who really loves science fiction and loves the technical aspect aspects of science fiction. As with the first two books, I'm loving the inclusion of earth politics as well as space politics. It's definitely more than just a space opera because we're still getting news from earth and we're still getting time on earth where we can see the devastation that the meteor that hit 11 years ago has wrought upon the planet and how people are reacting. And that also just makes the story feel more real. Another thing that I love about this book is how it deals with the passage of time. These books so far have taken course over the span of 11 years and one of my pet peeves in sci-fi is when scientific and technological advancements happen within the span of two years and it's like <laughs> the world was nowhere near colonizing space when the meteor hit 11 years ago and it's taken 11 years for us to get to the point where there's an established colony on the moon and that colony is still being built. I just love how realistic the science is. It's just it's phenomenal. The writing is great and once again the author is showing her amazing ability to write interpersonal relationships as well as a, a phenomenal main character. Like I never cared for Nicole's character before but now I am so invested in her and I dare say I like her even more than Elmo which I can't believe. I also love the representation for married life. I thought that maybe the author just hit it gold with the depiction of married life through Elma and her husband Nathaniel because they felt like such a real breathing living couple but Nicole and her husband's relationship is also explored at length along with Leonard and Myrtle's relationship and so we now have three couples that are married whose relationships feel so real because they're so deeply explored and you feel like you're married and you have a partner while reading this book I don't know it's just it's great there's nothing there's no criticisms I can give about this book now Akasha and I were going to decorate for Christmas today we are going to go to Target and get some tinsel and some other just little last minute things I need to decorate. I pulled my decorations and my tree out of storage from the basement. But I got a call, I got a call this morning um, and there's a family emergency with my immediate family who lives in Michigan. And so right now, Akasha and I are on lockdown. We are self-isolating. We are not going anywhere because um, we are preparing to make an emergency trip home to Michigan. Um, so. I don't want to talk about it, but those of you who are spiritual, religious, um, anything like that, if you could please put some positive energy, um, keep my family in your thoughts and prayers, I would really appreciate it. And since there's nothing I can do right now, I am just going to throw myself into reading. I'm going to decorate later if I feel up to it. Um, <laughs> We'll see, right now I'm just trying to get through the day and I'm going to try and get as far into this as possible. I'm only 100 pages, less than 100 pages away from concluding both The Space Between and Android Karenina. So yeah, let's just get to reading.
have completed these two books and I'm dancing because they were so good. They were so good, just freaking amazing. I'm gonna start by talking about my final thoughts for The Relentless Moon, the third book in the Lady Astronaut series. Yo, this is my favorite book in the series and I didn't think anything could top Calculating Stars. It just was such a phenomenal book. Faded Sky was good too, but this takes the cake and eats it too. Hi. Uh, you were just sitting down, minding your own business, and now that I'm filming, you want to be down the clown. Don't bring me that toy. I don't want to. Okay. okay. Hey. Hi. We literally went for a two-hour walk. Okay? Like, hi. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to try and give a book review with one hand. Basically, one of the things that I really loved about this book was that our main character has an eating disorder and the eating disorder is explored pretty unapologetically, but I love that it didn't dominate her character. I've said it already, but these characters just feel so real. They are so realistic and vivid and I just love them so much. I love that the black and the BIPOC characters take center stage in this book. I also really dig that it addresses the very real reality that when human beings do inevitably go to move to colonize space, there's gonna be a lot of eugenics involved in that because not everybody can make the journey into space. First of all, there's the issue of who can afford the trip, right? Shoes are, okay. We're just gonna put that on hold. Just give me five minutes, pup. Five minutes. Five minutes, give me five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so class issues will keep people from going into space. Essentially, these books look at the logistics of space colonization. One of the things that I loved about this was the freaking mystery because someone or multiple people have found their way on the mission and are trying to sabotage the colony and are causing just deaths and chaos overall. So on top of the space opera, you're trying to figure out who can and can't be trusted, who is actually a secret agent. And speaking of like the secret agent and the reason that the sabotage is happening, I found that the antagonists, the villains of the story were so compelling. Like the reason that they were trying to sabotage colonization of the moon, all of it was just so amazingly done and well executed. And, and you can definitely sympathize with the antagonist. with the antagonists and the villains of the, st of the story. Okay. And I know I've gushed about the characters enough. I know I've gushed about the main character, Nicole, enough, but I just, I can't sing her praises more than I already have. She has become one of my favorite protagonists of all time, especially, she's probably my favorite science fiction protagonist. She is lethal and cunning and intelligent, but she also isn't cold. I just, I really, really dig Nicole. She is so fascinating and amazing. And following her throughout this book was nothing short of a miracle, just watching a miracle unfold. Yeah, favorite book in the series, five out of five stars. Now, I know a lot of y'all are excited for my final thoughts on the space between worlds and I have to correct myself because earlier I said that this was YA and a couple people corrected me on Twitter, let me know that it's not YA, so my bad y'all. Where do we start? Oh, okay, okay. Just put your booty on me. What, is, why are you licking this? Oh my God. The ending of this book was perfect. It was a tearjerker. It was satisfying, but also unsatisfying in the most, okay. It was satisfying, but also it left some spaces of ambiguity so that it didn't feel too perfect. I loved that it was realistic, but sweet. And Kara is another one of my new favorite protagonists of all time. I am obsessed with her. I absolutely loved her and not even just her character, but her growth and her change and her development. You know, a lot of times where um, characters will grow throughout the story, but not really drastically, or they'll grow in a way that just seems like it was done for the sake of growth. I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of times the character growth and development doesn't feel genuine, but it, <laughs> but it does in this book. So obviously, oh, five out of five stars, by the way. Honestly, I would be shocked if these two books didn't make it on my favorites of the year list. Now, 
On, obviously, it is time for us to go for another walk. Stop rambling, I'm gonna go, okay, yes. I'm gonna go play with the dog, and then after our walk and exercise, I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna finish the last 70 pages of Android Karenina, which I'm ready to be done. I'm suing the author for wasting so much of my time. It's not that the book was bad. It just wasn't good. <laughs> I really wanted to like this book. I did. I, I don't though. First of all, I feel that this book was sorely mismarketed. It sends the impression that this is going to be a romance between a man and an android. And even the back of the book suggests that's what, what happens. That's not what we got. What we got was 500 pages of this very tumultuous, petty, jealous, shallow relationship between Count Ronsky and Anna Karenina. There were definite moments in the book where I was like really excited and invested. And I thought, because I thought that there was gonna be a payoff by the end of the novel, there was a pretty big tw Not this again. Honestly, even finishing it was a bore. Like I had to slog through the last 30 pages because I just knew that nothing great was gonna happen and I was correct. It was a huge waste of time. I'm sorry, I really wanted to like this. But it just wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. If any of you have read this and enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what you liked about it. That is gonna do it for this vlog. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below with a rocket ship or with the word space, just because all of these books have to do with space and I absolutely love that. I don't know if I mentioned, but um, the characters in Android Karenina go out into space, which is pretty dope. So yeah, let's do space rocket emoji and I will see you in my next vlog. My next vlog is going to be me reading adult fantasy and I'm very, very excited. I hope y'all like it. Until next time, stay safe and wear your mask. I'll see you in my next video.